It's probably the greatest privilege of being a Prime Minister is that you get to see this extraordinary public servant um, up close and spend time with them. You see them for one hour every week while Parliament is sitting. There's no one else in the room. It's a meeting you really value because she's an incredible listener mm -hmm. and you're trying to explain all the problems you face and mm -hmm. the difficulties you have and she has this great experience but great ability to listen and often you'd find as you're explaining mm -hmm. what was going wrong or what was going right, mm -hmm. um, you'd come out so much clearer and actually you'd come out always more confident because you just spent an hour with one of the greatest public servants of all time. Can I ask you to go right back to the beginning? It wasn't a surprise when you got into number 10 Downing Street. You've been the leader of the opposition ahead in the polls for quite some time. But you go to your first sort of official meeting with the Queen. What's in your mind as you're in the car or you're waiting? What, what, what are you thinking? And how did the anticipation or the expectation match the reality of those early meetings? Well, I suppose the meeting you most remember is you know, when you're called to the palace to go and ask to form a government. Uh, that's what happened to me in mm -hmm. 2010. And you, as you get into the mm -hmm. car and drive up the Mall, and you're going towards Buckingham Palace, you, you really, even though you've been thinking about it and preparing mm -hmm. for it and hoping for it and fighting for it, you can't believe you're doing it. Um, and then you uh, go into Buckingham Palace. And I had this sort of, I think my first meeting as potential prime minister was probably unique because we hadn't actually finished it wasn't clear whether there was going to be a coalition government or a single party government and so I had to say to Her Majesty well I'd, I'd like to try and form a government I'm not quite sure what sort of government it's going to be I hope it'll be a full coalition but I was left rather embarrassed mm. sort of saying um, you know mm. can I come back and tell you when mm. we've we've we finally got it together mm. um, but whenever you're with Her Majesty you always think I mean I was her 12th Prime Minister you think you know she has seen so much and heard so much and had to deal with so many different people going all the way back to Winston Churchill that you think probably nothing ever surprises her. I, I was wondering actually whether it's quite intimidating in its own way a as you say this is you were c coming in you expected to be there in a sense or you'd hoped to be there you clawed your way to the top of politics you know that's an, a not inconsiderable mm. achievement and yet you were going in to meet a, a queen who as you said had known every president had known Churchill had known Wilson had known Callaghan had known Thatcher um, some of these quite sort of legendary mm. figures and who has as everyone knew this vast amount of experience did you find that sort of quite intimidating you well know, it's sort of intimidating going into Buckingham Palace because you have got this mm. sense of of history and her role and the fact that she was this extraordinary public servant who had occupied that role so brilliantly for such a long period of time. But the Her Majesty the Queen had this amazing ability to put people um, at ease and to sort of take the pomp and the sort of history out of the occasion by just being very natural and very straightforward and that's what I found so often with those audiences that it's very formal you walk into the room and you bow and then you uh, are offered a seat and you sit down and you but it's once you start talking she has a very good way of putting you at ease and perhaps telling you what she had heard on the TV news mm. or whatever it was and then the conversation I always found would kind of flow mm. quite quite naturally and she um, you know had, often you 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 knew her great experience you ever you were talking about foreign affairs, mm. you know, she had visited over a hundred countries. She knew most of these foreign leaders probably better than you did. Mm. Um, and you knew you were listening to someone who really knew mm. what they were talking about. If this isn't a really odd question, and it probably is, but for so many people watching this uh, program, they don't have the privilege of that. Mm. Did you like her? Did you, when you... Yes, so she's, I mean, she does have this very good sense of humour. She was one of those people who could say a lot without always having to say very much. I found relatively quickly, you, you, you get to know someone from spending that time with mm. them and you know, they get to know you a bit and, and, and they're probably, you, know, you have your own way of explaining mm. things. And I, don't, I, I, I found that the, the, it was a, a very, they were very helpful meetings, it was a good relationship um, and she did have this very good sense of humor. I remember sometimes I wasn't able to go to the palace and you'd have to um, do the audience over the telephone. And sometimes that was almost more uh, 
Um, it seems odd to say it, but sometimes it's almost more frank because on the telephone you, you almost the, the two the, the two way talk is is uh, there's sometimes more more of it almost. Um, and uh, so I enjoyed those. Also, uh, every year you go to Balmoral, um, and you'd have an audience there in uh, the Queen's study, uh, and you got a real sense there that this was one of the places she absolutely loved, and you're in a room with so many of the things and pictures of people she loved and, um, and and you sort of it was a, a huge privilege to get that sort of insight into you know the, the the royal family when they're in a what they see is a you know very relaxed setting for them they're away from from their work and um, having a well-earned break well I was going to say Balmoral wasn't necessarily to everyone's taste uh, famously but you know you're a great lover of Scotland and the Scottish Highlands you've always said that so you must have I, li I, li I did I like getting there because, um, I mean, it seems odd to say that, you know, it's where you see the royal family in a relaxed setting because, I mean, it's a, it's a you know, castle, yeah. great big, but actually they do seem to relax. They're a long way away from all the public duties and, mm. um, and it's a place they love so much. And uh, I've always thought it was uh, an immense privilege to go up there and perhaps you'd go for a long mm. walk or you'd go fishing mm. and, uh, and, and uh, have the experience, extraordinary experience really of... Uh, Duke of Edinburgh and the Queen um, cooking you dinner in some Highland bothy up a up a up a moor and um, and and see them in this very private setting. Is their cooking was somewhat famous? The Duke famously designed liked. his own barbecue and yes. uh, was was um, quite brilliant at it. Mm -hmm. And that was, I suppose, even if you've you know mm. been to Buckingham Palace and you've done audiences with Her Majesty, nothing quite prepares you for being you know in a cottage halfway up a hillside in Scotland um, with uh, the Duke of Edinburgh cooking a barbecue and the Queen mm. handing around the food. That's mm. something I'm never going to forget. Did you find her a personal support to you? I think it was Wilson who said that it was the only conversation he could have in a week with someone of real substance that he didn't think was going to be leaked or, you know. That's definitely maybe... true because there's no one else in the room <clears throat> and so you feel you can, uh, you, you, and I think I mm. did, and I'm sure other prime ministers did. You reveal what you're really thinking about something, the real mm. worries you have about a particular course of action, or consequences, or problems that you've got, or political problems, or problems within the cabinet. You know, you felt you could say absolutely anything, uh, and often that's why I think you come out of the meeting clearer about your problems because you'd explain them mm. to someone who had huge experience and was very good and at did, listening. Did you ever film? Nervous. I mean, was it was a little bit like doing your homework. Like, all right, I've got to make sure that I'm yes. across this because I know she's going to ask me some difficult yeah, questions. You, you definitely. You always knew she would have, you know, watched the latest news bulletins. You knew she read everything that went into her mm. box of papers. You knew if it was anything to do with security or defence or the armed forces uh, or overseas affairs, she'd be immensely knowledgeable. And so, yes, you did want to do your homework. You also wanted to check up that. Something hadn't happened, you know, as you were leaving the office and getting into the car. Mm. I'd always check the latest news headlines just in case I'd missed something. Because once or twice, you know, she'd asked something that had literally just happened because mm. she'd been watching the news and you hadn't. So, uh, uh, yeah, you did your homework. When you stopped being prime minister, did you miss it when you did? Oh it? yes, you you miss it because uh, it was the part, the one moment of the week you could stop and try and think and explain what you were trying to do and the difficulties you were having. Um, and also you felt you were doing it in, with someone who was so incredibly special, this unbelievably devoted public servant with so much experience, um, who did have a wonderful sense of humour and a great understanding of what you were trying to do. And you just felt it was an enormous privilege. And also as someone who personally is a huge supporter and, and uh, believer in our system and in all the work that she did, it was a huge honour to, to be able to do that. She has been so extraordinary um, in the length of service, in the quality of everything that she's done, the professionalism, the dedication, um, that I think it's going to take us a very long time to fully understand just what we've had and just what we've lost. Um, but with that, uh, I have absolute confidence that our system can continue and that the people who, who come after her, they know the very difficult job that has to be done.